This is going to start in John chapter 5 and verse 31. And we're going to look at the subject of witnesses. So in John 5, 31, Jesus says, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Now, Jesus wasn't the only one to bear witness of himself. It says in Deuteronomy 17, 6, At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. So Jesus had more than one witness. But Jesus Christ is witness that he himself is God. He says in John eight fifty eight, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus bore witness of himself that he is God in the flesh. And then John ten thirty says, I and my father... Are one, so Jesus wasn't the only one to bear witness of Jesus Christ. He's he didn't just bear witness of himself. You know, in John five thirty two, he said, "There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true." So you know who witnessed of Jesus Christ being God? One of the greatest preachers who ever lived, and that's John the Baptist. In John five thirty three and 34, in the chapter we're studying, it says, Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man. But these things I say, that ye might be saved. So John bore witness of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he's true. Jesus was only mentioning John because people will pay attention to what a regular man says many times before they will listen to what God says. Jesus, claiming to be God, was enough of a witness. But people like the witness of a man. And they rejected John the Baptist. In John chapter 1, 29 through 30, it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. So John bore witness that even though he himself was born before Jesus, he said that Jesus was before him, recognizing that Jesus wasn't just a man, but eternal God. And then in John 1.15, it says, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And Jesus says this about John in John chapter 5 and verse 35. He says, He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. So John the Baptist was a light. And every Christian should be a light. Every Christian should be a witness of Jesus Christ. In John 1, 6 through 7 it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. So, have you been sent as a witness? We're all called to preach the gospel if you're a born-again believer. Uh, there's no excuse for you not to preach the gospel. Uh, God has sent all of us for, to be a witness. So, are you a light? Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Proverbs 4.18, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. The world is in darkness with their minds blinded to the gospel. But the Christian should shine the light so the sinner can see his sinful condition and go to the narrow way. Christians aren't shining light because they haven't been putting the light in. Psalms 119, 130 says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So when you read the Bible, you're putting light in you. And when you speak, the light will come out of you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What else gives witness of Jesus. We also see Jesus' works, the works that Jesus did, bore witness. In John 5, 36, it says, But I have greater witness than that of John, 
For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. The healing, the casting out devils, the walking on the water, and all the other things Jesus does bears witness that he was who he said he was. And also the Father himself bears witness that Jesus Christ is God. In John 5, 37, it says, And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Now, they seen his shape. Because Jesus said, remember, he said, If you have seen me, you've seen the Father. But according to them, they have never seen him. Because they didn't believe Jesus was God. So when Jesus said they neither heard his voice or seen his shape, he's referring to their unbelief in who he is. John eighteen eighteen says, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. And if you've read the book of Hebrews, then you've read Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8, where the Father calls Jesus God. It says, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So right there, the Father calls Jesus, who's the Son, he calls him God. Now, what is the greatest witness the Lord gives us today? The Word of God, or the words of God themselves. Is the greatest witness. John 5 38 says, And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Peter, who walked and talked with Jesus, saw Jesus and Moses and Elijah together. He saw people healed, he witnessed the death, burial, and resurrection, went to the empty tomb and seen Jesus Christ walk on water and pull him up out of it. He, he was looking up at Jesus, and Jesus pulled him out of the water. You know, he saw many things. And this is what Peter said in his epistle in 2 Peter 1, 19. He says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. And what he means by we have a more sure word of prophecy is that the word of God is the more, the most trustworthy thing you have. If an angel came to you at night and told you something the Lord said, the Bible is a much greater, reliable, trustworthy, perfect witness than something appearing to you telling you that it is Jesus. And 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Scriptures bear witness to the truth. John 7.38, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. As the Scripture has said, it bears a witness that Jesus is who he said he was. In Psalms 138.2, it says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So God has the scriptures set up very high. John 5.39, Jesus said, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Now listen to this. And they are they which testify of me. So the scriptures testify that Jesus is who he said he was. The scriptures is what shows you how to get eternal life and what shows you that you have eternal life. And all these people doubting their salvation are usually the ones that never pick up the book and read. The scriptures testify of Jesus Christ. Who he is, what he did, how he was. Now John 5.40 it says, and you will not come to me that ye might have life. That's what Jesus said. But we have the word of God, which is supernatural. We have the witness of God in nature. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. But still, people won't come to him. He says, and you will not come to me that ye might have life. 
They won't come to him that they might have life, although they say, I'm going to live my life. Or they say, you only live once. Or I'm going to live life to the fullest. Or this is my life. But they don't even know what life is about. It says in Revelation, for his pleasure we are and were created. And Paul says in Colossians, all things were created by him and for him. But Jesus said in John 5.40, and you will not come to me that you might have life. John 5.41 says, I receive not honor from men. Jesus said, I receive not honor from men. Then in Matthew 13, 57, it says, And they were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Jesus didn't care about getting honor from men. All he cared about was coming to sinners that wanted to be saved. John 5, 42 says, But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. Today, all everyone talks about is love, and I love God, and God loves me, and God loves you just like you are. Uh, a sodomite wants to sing in church. The pastor, pastor says, no, you can't sing, but a bunch of people will get up and say that that pastor is hateful, and he, they'll say to him, you know, you need to remember that we're all sinners, and they'll say, you can't keep him from sinning just because he sins differently than you, and they'll say, if you ain't got enough Bible... Or something, they'll they'll say that he doesn't know the Bible because they'll say, "Judge not, lest you be judged," and things like that. But these people are the ones that don't know the Bible. I mean, they say, "Well, you're supposed to love everybody," but what does that have to do with a sex pervert, an open sex pervert, unrepentant sex pervert singing in church? If a man likes little boys. What did he have to be first? A sodomite. If a man goes into the bathroom with a little girl, what is he? A sex pervert. If a man dresses up like a woman, he is a sex pervert. And if he's not trying to get right, if he's, you know, if he, and he's openly unashamed, then he has no business doing anything. In church, he has no business preaching. Singing, any of those things. An sodomite <coughs> may not like little kids, but that's a gateway to that. And if you really love, then you have to hate some things. If you love little kids, you hate the sin of pedophilia. If you love little kids, you hate the sin of sodomy. If you really love, then you have to hate. Psalms 97.10 says, Ye that love the Lord hate evil, so love hates. And John 5.43 says, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. So the Lord came into his own, and his own received him not. They looked into the eyes of God and said, No. But they'll receive a false prophet and an antichrist and a false teacher and a money-hungry TV preacher. When I sit and hear somebody like Benny Hinn or Joseph Prince, I'm thinking, do people really believe this stupid junk? Because that's what it is. Money-hungry, greedy, a filthy lucre, perverters of the scriptures. John 5.44 says, How can you believe which receive honor one of another? And seek not the honor that cometh from God only. In 1 Thessalonians 2, 6, Paul said, Nor of men sought we glory. Paul wasn't looking for the honor from men. Jesus wasn't looking for the honor from men. We know that when someone gets a bunch of honor from men, then they're probably not honoring God themselves. John five forty five. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. So the law accuses them. And the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Moses accuses them. Moses gave the law. And nobody ever kept the law perfectly. So it always defeats man. Jesus kept it. He fulfilled all righteousness. The Bible bears witness that he's sinless. And the only way for you to be seen as a perfect person 
is to believe on him and get his righteousness applied to you. It's the only way. John 5, 46, For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But they don't really believe Moses. And if Moses was standing in front of them, they would have hated him too. Moses wrote of Jesus Christ. He wrote Genesis through Deuteronomy. Go back there and read about all the prophecies and pictures and types of the Lord Jesus Christ. John 5, 47 says, But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? They don't believe anything that bears witness of Jesus Christ. But will you bear witness of Jesus Christ because of all these other great people and things that bear witness of Jesus? Just like the apostles did in Acts 4.33, it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. They gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Are you doing that? If you're not doing that, then you're doing no better than the devils do. Because in Mark 5, 7, they bore witness that Jesus was the Son of God. The devils know a lot more about truth than a Jehovah's Witness. They know more a lot more about the truth than a Muslim. And the devils know the truth, but they persuade the cults and the false religions to teach contrary to the truth because they want to further blind men and have them in rejection of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that they can populate hell more and more. But the Bible says how to be saved. It's very clear. Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, and he says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. We're saved by faith in his blood. Jesus Christ shed his blood. And if we'll come to him as the guilty sinner we are and put our faith on the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus Christ died on the cross by shedding his blood. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. And putting your trust on that to pay for your sin debt is how you get into heaven. And I hope that you will do that before it's too late.